Hi, I'm Eric Voss, and Godzilla King of the Monsters released a new trailer that follows up its epic Comic-Con trailer with lots of glorious new shots of kaiju smashing everything, just like I do to my apartment when the Wi-Fi drops out. Just let me fight! I'm gonna break this trailer down shot by shot, point out all the details that you might have missed, including a few new possible monsters revealed in some subtle moments. Who am I kidding? Nothing about kaiju is subtle. Spoiler warning in case any predictions end up being right, and a special shout out to Luke Perry for being awesome during our live countdown to our Avengers Endgame trailer breakdown premiere last weekend. Thanks, Luke. Let's get started. Hello? Is anyone there? Okay, this trailer opens with Millie Bobby Brown of Stranger Things, Millie Bobby B, who's playing Madison Russell. She's the daughter of Vera Farmiga's character, Dr. Emma Russell, a paleobiologist working for Monarch, the organization from the previous movie. Madison's father is Mark, Emma's ex-husband, played by Kyle Chandler. As Madison tries to reach out to someone with old radio equipment, check out this shot of the ocean here. You can see dozens of dead sea creatures floating on the surface. Can't tell if those are sharks or whales or just fish. Perhaps they were killed by an electric shock running through the water, perhaps caused by Ghidorah bursting out of the Antarctic ice. There's also another shot of people fleeing through Mexican streets as the shadow of Rodan flies overhead. And let's move on to the next clip. I'm trying to reach. Okay, in this section, we see a shot from inside the cockpit of this large aircraft. This appears to be some kind of mobile command center for the Monarch Corporation, so that they can track and monitor the kaiju's movements throughout the world. Through the window, we can see the ruins of Washington, D.C., the Capitol Dome, the Washington Monument. Tornadoes and lightning storms filled the sky, suggesting an attack from Ghidorah. You may be able to see some of the serpent heads silhouetted in the clouds. Now, listen closely to the noises that Madison hears from the radio. Those could be sirens, or it could be a screech from a kaiju. It actually sounds a lot like the noise that Ghidorah makes later in this trailer. In my breakdown of the last trailer, I speculated that Madison could have some kind of telepathic link with Mothra and the other kaiju. There's all those shots of her reaching her hand out, and her mother's research involves trying to communicate with the monsters with bioacoustics. Now, in the Toho movies, there are those two twin priestess fairies called the Shobjin. They show up and they dance and they sing for Mothra. Perhaps Madison's character could be some version of that. And maybe accidentally tapping into the monster's brain chemistry could explain Madison's reaction here. Next clip. Senators, we believe that these titans are just the tip of the iceberg. Okay, here we see the rise of Rodan from the volcano in Mexico. So cool. Followed by a helicopter landing at the Monster Zero Monarch Station in Antarctica. Then a new interesting shot, an oil field being torn up by these sharp claws bursting from the ground. Now in the last trailer, we saw a total of four kaiju. And I keep saying kaiju, that's the term for monsters. They're also called titans, I guess. That's the term they're using in this movie. So those four are Godzilla, returning from the first movie, Mothra, the gentle giant, Rodan, the flying pteranodon, and Ghidorah, the ultimate nemesis, the evil one with these three serpent heads that can create lightning storms. But when you go on the promotional website for this movie, monarchsciences.com, you can see a number of other monarch locations around the globe with sightings and activity reported from nearby areas. And we've been told that we will see somewhere between 10 and 15 total monsters in this movie. Now, one of these locations is in the South Pacific, most likely Skull Island, that's where Kong is. You can also track Godzilla's current movement. As of this recording, he's swimming in the South Atlantic along South America toward Antarctica. Now, I'm not sure where this oil field is. Maybe one of the two in the American West or in the Middle East or in Sudan or in Morocco or Sicily. But those multiple legs make me think this could be the Kaiju Kumonga, also known as Spiga. It's the spider monster who first appeared in the Toho film Son of Godzilla. Now, I'm not a huge fan of spiders of any size, so I really hope it isn't this. We also see quick shots of Mark and the character 
character played by Charles Dance, Tywin Lannister from Game of Thrones. It sounds like he may be heading up a mysterious other organization that's in conflict with Monarch. There's actually a theory going around that we saw from a comment on our videos by Mike Hawk saying that this guy could actually be James Conrad. That's Tom Hiddleston's character in Kong Skull Island. He was a British Special Air Service captain, he served in Vietnam, and throughout that movie he gained a special appreciation for Kaiju, and he would have a history of hostility with Monarch. This movie's director teased that one character from Skull Island would appear in this movie. We also see Thomas Middleditch's character, Sam Coleman, he's a communication liaison between Monarch and the government, testifying before a US Senate panel. He calls the Titans discovered so far the tip of the iceberg, which could be a fun wordplay, hinting at the fact that Ghidorah is frozen deep within polar ice. And after a quick shot of Sally Hawkins reprising her role as Dr. Vivian Graham from the previous Godzilla movie, we get the next clip. Which of these titans are here to protect us? Which of these titans are here to threaten us? Okay, lots going on here. After that monarch aircraft and fleet flees Redan, there's this big shockwave destroying a massive hill in this forest region. Now this could be another new kaiju, with many thinking that this could be Anguirus. Anguirus is a quadrupedal monster with a spike-covered carapace and an elongated crocodile-style mouth. It burrows under the ground, it can crawl and leap at fast speeds. It can actually jump backward to impale its enemies on its spikes. It first appeared in the Toho film Godzilla Raids Again as a rival to Godzilla, but then later gained a reputation as an ally to Godzilla. Next we see a shot of these submarines approaching this underwater cavern. There's lava spilling out. Now this could be Godzilla's undersea temple. That's where he goes to rest. I think we'll see some more shots from this location later. Then there's a quick shot from a battle with some soldiers from the G Team, that's the military unit unit that joins Monarch to fight kaiju situations. And as Coleman asks if the monsters are here to protect us, the editing sinks a shot of Mothra, suggesting that this kaiju will keep its benevolent reputation in this movie. You can also hear some of its sonic screech as it emits its god rays. And then a more destructive shot of Rodan, as Coleman says, some of the titans are here to threaten us. And notice how the powerful gusts from its wings lift people off the ground. Ew. All right, let's move on. So you'd want to make Godzilla our pet? No. We would be his. Okay, this trailer finally gives us our first close look of Ghidorah, crushing this Dunkin' Donuts sign as it crawls into Fenway Park in Boston. The size and the scale of this thing are amazing. You can actually see the texture on each of its spikes on its massive tail as the rest of it looms in the background. I don't know if it's just the rain of this shot, but it reminds me a lot of how the T-Rex in Jurassic Park just knocked over parts of the fence just because it was like too bulky and awkward. And then as the senators laugh in Coleman's face at the idea of making Godzilla a pet, Ken Watanabe, reprising his role as Dr. Ishiro Serizawa, gets in another great line. Let them fight. No, Watanabe, come on. We practice this. It's, it's, we will be his pets. It's gonna be such a great mic drop. Let's try it again. Let them fight. What? Who fight? You already, uh, you know what? Let's just forget it. Let's move on. You're sure he's gonna be okay? Okay, in this section we see more of what looks like that undersea Godzilla temple. Maybe there's like an air pocket there or something. Where there's the giant sleeping kaiju and who I assume from the footage in the last trailer could be Serizawa approaching him to wake him so that he can pit the monsters against each other and... Actually, do you want to take this one, Watanabe? We would be his. Then, as we see Godzilla scare Mark and Dr. Chen and the submarine, he blasts past them. You can actually see the shockwave from his atomic breath rippling through the water. Then there's some more shots of Madison and Emma. Actually sounds like they've been kidnapped, perhaps by Charles Dance's mysterious organization. And then there's a quick shot of Ghidorah laying waste, and we move on. They're everywhere. Battling for dominance. A rival alpha to Godzilla. You gotta be kidding. 
Okay, here Dr. Graham confirms that several kaiju are popping up everywhere across the globe, with some of them pairing off to fight. There's a shot of Rodan reaching out to snatch the Monarch aircraft, and a shot of Mothra swooping in with her claws out. Perhaps we'll see an aerial dogfight between these two flyers. And then a very interesting wide shot of Godzilla and Ghidorah facing off. And the size of Ghidorah's wingspan is just insane. Then there's a shot of Barnes, that's the leader of the G team, played by O'Shea Jackson Jr., fighting in that snowy Antarctica battle. Perhaps this is the moment Ghidorah rises from the ice. And a shot of Ghidorah firing lightning out of its mouth. You can actually see the electric charge building up in its neck. Kind of like this is lightning vomit. Next clip. Okay, here there's another close-up of Mothra as it screeches and dives into battle. There's also a shot of this massive creature on fire. It's causing nearby structures to suddenly burst into flames. Now this could be an adaptation of Fire Godzilla. That's a fiery version of the kaiju that I actually used to have a toy of, so maybe that's why I'm seeing it. And then there's a lot more battle shots, including Rodan taking out a nearby aircraft with a barrel roll. You notice how the clouds in front of it illuminate with that yellow electricity. This could be once again from Ghidorah. This might be taking place over that big DC battle. And let's move on to the final clip. <sighs> Ooh, yeah, Millie Bobby B said the best. Oh shh. Indeed, Godzilla and Ghidorah slam into each other in Boston. And you know, not to fat shame a kaiju, but it's pretty impressive to see something with Godzilla's curves move that fast. Fenway Park's quickest heavyweight waddle since the days of Big Poppy. This shot reminds me of the way the trailer for Thor Ragnarok ended. Remember, it cuts to the title right before the collision. And if you actually look at the frame right before that title reveal, you can see how Godzilla's playing some smart defense here. He uses each of his claws to grab Ghidorah's left and right head, clamp the mouth shut, while he uses his mouth to dive in toward the center neck. Will it be very effective? We'll see. My question for you is which of these kaiju would you be most terrified of? Like Ghidorah seems like the most threatening, but if the spider thing is in this movie, I will have to go back to lining my sheets. <laughs> Just kidding, I never stopped lining them. Comment down below with your nightmare kaiju and follow New Rockstars on Twitter at New Rockstars. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at EA Voss. And subscribe to New Rockstars for breakdowns of all the cool new trailers that we're excited about. And up, oh, just thought about spiders again. <laughs> Gotta change my clothes.